Hello everyone, Steve here with a couple of videos showing the assembly and debug of the two clocks that I call my easy build clocks. There's a large size and then a smaller size. Uh, the smaller size is actually my favorite because the smaller lighter weight gears give a runtime of up to 32 days. The assembly of both of these clocks is pretty much identical other than the size of the components. And the first video is going to focus on the component pre-assembly and it'll pretty much follow the, the, the order of instructions that are in the assembly manual, uh, starting with printing the parts, the metal parts, back frame, front frame, the winding drum ratchet, minute hand, pendulum, and the weight shell. And feel free to skip ahead to any of the parts that are interesting to you. Not everything is going to be important to everybody. So I'll, I'll put the time in the, in the comments below so you can skip to the parts that's most interested to you. The frame goes together relatively easily. Everything uses the same size wood screws. I get these at the local hardware store. Uh, a box of 100 should be able to build three or four different clocks. The pieces for the front frame are a piece on the, the left that the, the winding key is going to fit into and then a L-shaped piece on the right. So I'm going to put the front frame together first. And the reason I put the front frame together first is because I'm going to use the, the front frame to help hold the back frame up. There are two small brackets, keyhole hangers. Uh, one has three screw holes. That one goes in the top. Um, that's, that's the keyhole hanger that's going to support most of the weight of the clock. The other keyhole hanger at the bottom is really only for steadying the clock. It doesn't support any weight. Uh, it only has a single screw. The next two pieces look nearly identical and the screws are in the same position so you need to make sure you put the right one on the right side. Let me turn the clock around really quick. The winding key goes on the left and this is the, the piece that also goes on the left for the winding key. The back frame also has a side hole that will be used to hang one end of the weight cord when the clock is hung on the wall. And I like to use a screw with a shoulder if you, if you have one uh, because it sticks out a little bit and if there's a shoulder there's no threads that might uh, abrade the winding cord. The winding drum is relatively easy. The drum is just a gear with a, a barrel for this, the cord to wind around. And one of the spokes has a hole in it for the, the cord to run through. Measure off 10 or 12 feet of string and then just tie a couple of knots. I'm not a fisherman, so I don't know if there's a preferred way of tying these knots, but I like to grab the, the, the end I'm going to cut off with a pair of pliers and really tug it so the knot is nice and snug. Give it three or four 
knots and then just cut the end off. Make sure, make sure that if you pull on that, it's not going to come undone. And then holding the winding drum in my left hand, I'm wrapping the cord around counterclockwise. And then on the other end, just tie a loop. Um, I like to leave a loop a couple inches long and then cut the end off. Next up is the, the ratchet assembly. And the components are a little bit different between the large and the small clock. On the large clock, there's a long shaft on the ratchet component and the tall gear has a hole and those need to fit together and the gear needs to spin. If there's too much friction, you won't be able to wind the clock. You'll have to run some sandpaper around the, the tall shaft on the ratchet. I believe the medium-sized clock doesn't use that long shaft. There just wasn't enough space in the, the tall gear to make that happen. Uh, so just make, on the large clock, make sure that the, the gear will spin on that tall shaft. This piece uses three springs from ballpoint pens, and the default length is typically a little bit long, and I like to just put them onto a piece of the one and a half millimeter music wire and just compress them a little bit. Uh, they could also be cut, or they could be left long. Uh, side effect if they're long is that there's a little too much pressure and the clock will be noisy when you're winding. Uh, the way this goes together is the, the tall gear has three screw holes and three clicks. The, the clicks have a chamfered side and a flat side. So the screw needs to go into the chamfered side and just take a click and put a screw in and now that's too tight so loosen it up a little bit and the, the click needs to be able to swing freely. Repeat the process for all three clicks and make sure that the, the clicks are loose. And then you can insert a spring into the hole in the, the tall gear and then also the hole in the click. Put the parts together. Sometimes it helps to align, line everything up using the one and a half millimeter rod. And when this is all put together, you should be able to rotate it in one direction. It clicks and the, the springs are just barely pushing this click out to the outer hub. That keeps it relatively quiet. The next step is the assembly of the minute hand arbor and that consists of the large minute hand gear, a smaller gear, I believe I call the large gear gear 4 and gear 4B. And There may be different numbers of teeth on these gears, uh, specifically how many teeth are on the pinion of the large gear and the two different versions of the clock could have different numbers of teeth. Uh, there is a two spacers, uh, spacer 4A and spacer 4B. Uh, spacer 4A could be replaced with a uh, shaft collar. Uh, it's easier to put on, but if you don't have them, that's fine because the printed component works just as well. So I'll show both ways and 
you can, if you happen to have access to the shaft collars, uh, it's probably easier to put it together that way. The springs are stretched out to be about an inch and a quarter. Uh, that that just happens to give the best pressure. If if there's not enough pressure, the minute hand might slip. So I pull the spring out from a pan and stretch it slightly if needed. I'm going to start by putting on the spacer 4A. I'm sorry if the, the camera is a little bit jumpy. And I'll give that a little bit more. Length isn't super critical, but that's about a quarter of an inch. And then the minute hand arbor. And if, if the minute hand arbor doesn't rotate on the, the shaft, I like to just take a 1 8 inch drill and by hand just go through one time and then pull it out that leaves a hole that's an eighth of an inch and this is three millimeter rod makes it so that it'll spin nicely so now i've got spacer 4b sp or gear 4 the spring goes on the arbor the cover goes over the spring and then gear 4b and i'm just going to start that and spacer or gear 4b is a tight fit so you d definitely do not want to drill out gear 4b if gear 4b is loose then what you're going to have to do is either use gear 4B tight or use some epoxy and position that one so that it holds tight to the minute hand arbor. And I'm just using a just a piece of PVC pipe. I guess that would be easy enough to just put it right over like that and then use that to pound into Um, you could use a block of wood with a hole in it. Lots of ways you can make this go together. Then you need to make sure that when this all comes together that the, the slot goes onto the little tab. But I want to leave a little bit of a gap when this is all done. It was designed with about 0.05 inches of gap. And I can push on the, the two pieces and that will close the gap. The most important thing is when I put the minute hand on the end of the minute hand arbor and I hold the large gear four, that I can rotate the minute hand gear 4B rotates with it and also the minute hand holds its position. So that was the first method of putting together the minute hand arbor. I'm going to show you a, a second method. Uh, first of all I'm going to just take this apart. Spacer 4A should come off need to be careful that this thing doesn't go flying apart. I'm going to put it together using a shaft collar and just so you can see the difference um, it's a little bit easier to put together that way. So the first step would be to assemble gear 4B onto the, the minute hand arbor with 
1.9 inches sticking out the bottom and then assembling it in the reverse order which is spacer 4B, the spring, the minute hand arbor, and the spring goes down the, the center of the shaft of gear 4 and that pushes together with the, the tab going into the slot. A shaft collar goes on the end. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap just like before and again I can put the minute hand onto the arbor and rotate that while holding gear 4. Next up is the pendulum and pallet. The pallet is a fairly simple structure. You know, previous clocks used to have epoxy and pins and lots of components that had to be put together. This one is pretty much all print in place. And this is going to go onto the clock this way. And I want the, the top end of the pendulum shaft to have the pins pointing forward. So I'm going to put that onto, yeah, put, I'm going to put a, one of the tall 0.4 inch thick nuts, slide the pendulum shaft onto the arbor of the pallet, and then put on a second nut. The starting position for this should be about centered along the threaded portion and I can just tighten that down and that's going to lock the the angle of the pendulum arm versus the, the ends of the pallet and when this goes together on the clock the pieces of the pendulum shaft just slide together and they hold position fairly well. No glued parts, a uh, really simple design. The last step is the pendulum bob and this could be filled with pennies. I believe it takes 44 US pennies, Canadian pennies, and either the one or two euro coins if you have them, but really the weight of the bob is not that important. You could fill these holes with BBs. Small rocks would probably work just as well. The height of these 11 pennies that I put into each hole could almost fit one more penny. It's not that important. I'm not gonna to try to cram in a 12th penny to, into each hole. Uh, it's just fine with the 11 per hole that I have right now. And then just two screws to close the, the back cover onto the bob. The bottom portion of the pendulum bob takes two of the thinner threaded nuts and I'm just going to start with those somewhere around the midpoint position. Uh, the reason that there's two nuts is so that they can lock together and that won't spin easily, but if I need to, I can move it in order to change the length of the pendulum. This will slide right through the hole in the, the pendulum bob. That will hang on the, on the clock. Again, all printed components with the exception of a few pennies and two screws. So I'm gonna build the, the weight shell now. This is the 3.2 inch weight shell and I'm gonna put an extension on the bottom and fill it full of BBs and see how much it weighs. Now this is one of the few uses of an empty spool holder. To start off, I'm just going to start pouring in BBs.
I'm going to call that just about full. Yeah, bring back the scale. Let's see what we got. Oh, sorry, the scale has to be upside down the way the camera angle is. That's 140 ounces, so looks to be about eight and a half pounds. I'm going to turn this thing over and add the extension now. The way the, the way the extension collars work is there are four holes that go all the way through and then four holes that will hold the screws for the bottom cover. So I want to line up the through holes with the screw holes on the, the full height um, weight shell and then drop them in. These screws will go all the way through. Okay, let's see how much that weighs now. Hundred and seventy-three ounces, so let's see, that's ten pounds and about fourteen ounces. So almost eleven pounds, pretty much what the, the estimate was gonna be. When adding the pulley to the weight shell, it helps if you taper the the tip or the end of the two inch long shaft uh, doesn't have to be sharp point just a little bit of a bevel helps to be able to insert that through the bearing a little bit easier the bearing goes into the two-part bearing holder um, they're kind of a press fit it helps to use a one sixteenth inch rod to line up the hole uh, just to get it started. Let me try it on its side. There we go. And once you get the one sixteenth inch rod through, then just go ahead and push through the the three millimeter shaft and I can I've got it partly through sometimes you have to pound it in because depending on the tolerance of your printer the hole may be a different size and then just check that the pulley will spin freely in the slot the next video will focus on the placement of the gears into the frame and then a follow-up video will focus on how to debug the clock and get it working properly.